questions for Coach Matt. Start with Brent and then go to Ben. Where, where do you see your running back room different now than, than maybe in the fall? And, and what do you specifically, where do you specifically see them adjusted to this point? Yeah, I think right now the biggest thing I can say is our accountability. One thing, you know, we had a lot of issues as far as, you know, guys being where they're supposed to be off the field and, and they kind of carried over sometimes to on the field. But now that room has changed dramatically. You see guys making sure they uh, got more leadership responsibilities in the room. You know, guys like Jabari is taking a different role. Uh, Jay Wright is a little bit older. So that maturity is, is really transforming into the accountability, the type of things that you always want to want to see from your players as far as in, that, in the classroom. Also, too, you also see them guys. You don't have to look for those guys as far as being to, on time to meetings and things like that. Sometimes that was an issue as far as understanding five minutes early is what we want, not right on time. So that, that's the biggest thing that I see from our room this year. Uh, when you talk about Justin, uh, the biggest thing that I see from him is he is a, a physical player when he understands what's going on. You know, everything is moving extremely fast for him right now as a true freshman. But you can see he shows flashes of things that we really want to see. The physicality, the big body, uh, the ability to get those tough one to two yards that we always talk about. He has that when he understands what to do. Things are still going uh, quite a bit fast for him right now. But for the most part, I think with more reps, more practice, uh, summer uh, in a fall camp, I think you're going to see a, a different player when we cut, get into the season. With Jalen, what have you been emphasizing with him going from year one to year two? And have you started to see that leap to year two from him? Man, he has made tremendous jumps within our program. Right now, when we talk about, like I said before, accountability, that is tremendous growth. Also, too, you can talk about just his understanding of the game overall. You know, the whys of why we do things. You know, when you were a freshman last year, it was really just lining up and playing football and just, you know, go left, go right, trying to figure it out. Everything was moving extremely fast. No different than it is for Justin right now. But now what I see from Jay Wright, you know, we do things within practice where we talk to the talk to the unit. You know, he's called on a lot, especially since Jabari's being out, to go ahead and talk to the unit because he's the most experienced really back, you know, that has playing time right now. So, like, that guy has just made tremendous growth within our program. He can eventually be a poster boy to a guy that comes in basically as a freshman, an early, early enrollee, and then every year just continues to get better in the growth process. Adam? In terms of Justin, uh, playbook, pass protection, responsibilities and all that, how, how much understanding is he going to have to get to? Is he going to, you know, 80%? How, how comfortable do you have to be to put him out on the field in the fall? Uh, in, in big situations? Well, I think it's a day-by-day -day process right now. You know, he's got to earn, keep earning the trust of the coaches. You know, every day, every step for him is just one step at a time. Every, every day we see a little bit of growth here. Uh, today was a footwork growth. You know, he had some issues from just the running game footwork today. I don't think he had a lot of those issues today. So as we grow over to the summertime and to fall camp, you know, I got to continue to feel comfortable with him, like you said before, in protections. Uh, that's the biggest thing that's different from a young high school guy to uh, making that jump to college. No different than college to pros. It's the protection aspect of it. He does have to, have to get better. All of them have to get better. Uh, but just everything is moving so fast for him right now. I think he has to continue to grow. I would have never imagined in a million years last year that a guy like Jalen Wright would end up being thrust in those situations last year. Uh, you talk about the last play the last, at the end of the season, hey, you got a true freshman in there, you know, just because of our bodies. So there's no, no difference. You never know what could happen. So, you know, our goal is to make sure he's prepared to play to the best of his ability, just continue to keep working with him. And like I said, it's a one day at a time for him. Terry, how, how beneficial can it be to have a situation where you have a guy like Jalen who was a freshman who went through a lot of things Justin's going through now to sort of be that guy for, for Justin as somebody you can rely on? Or, or is that dynamic there between those two? Man, it is. I think for all of them, to be honest with you, you take a look at even Jabari's background. You know, he played a little bit in that 2020 season, not very much. He was still kind of a freshman, to be honest with you, last year in the 21 season. So all those guys uh, have been through a little bit of that from a standpoint. You know, there's no young players, so to speak, in our program. Guys got to come in and they got to, you know, learn fast and, and figure out what's going on so they can be ready to play. Uh, we just don't have that luxury to just kind of sit guys and say, hey, we can, you know, groom you and do things like that. Hey, man, when you come in here, the expectation is you're ready to play. And we're going to try to do everything in our power to get you ready to play. 
Uh, but guys like Jabari and Jalen Wright being in, in similar situations in the past, uh, those guys like like uh, Justin can really lean on those guys to understand not only just you know on the field but how to manage your day more than anything else. You know, it's a lot of new things getting thrown to Justin on the field and off the field, so he has to make sure that he just understands how to manage it all. Got to make sure he understands how to manage and take care of his body. You know, he's a big back. He's 210, 215 pounds. He's probably one of the bigger backs we got in the room. But he's a muscle guy, low body fat. So like just the wear and tear on the body just over the course of the spring, he has to learn that. And guys like Jabari, who dealt with shoulder issues last year, guys like Jalen Wright, who dealt with turf toe issues last year, those guys can kind of mentor him and, and let him know, look, going to the training room, getting a cold tub, getting the sleep, extra treatment, all that stuff is truly important to really what, what you end up doing on the field. What has uh, a guy like Lanine done this offseason, put him in a position to, to help you guys out in the fall? I know you want four or five guys that you can count on. Looks like he's a guy that can be in that spot. Yeah, Lanith has really grown from a standpoint of he's been more healthier uh, this this off of this spring, and you kind of see it in his game. You know, day by day, you know, he showed flashes of what we feel like he can do. He's probably the only one that really, you know, we, we trust for the most part from a pass protection standpoint, as far as not only understanding what to do, but also to having the ability to to get there. Uh, he's a bigger body guy, so you know, 6'2", 220. So you're talking about a guy that you know he matches up pretty good with a lot of linebackers, especially in this league. He has long arms, so it's just like a boxer when you have that arm reach that he can put his hands on people extremely fast. So like from that standpoint, you know, Jabari, you never want to see a player out, but by Jabari being out, it has increased his reps tremendously. So it's just a matter of just getting more reps in there. And now he's he's made some growth from a pass protection standpoint. He shows flashes as a runner. You saw last week in the scrimmage, he's understanding a little bit more about running back position and what we expect and what we, we want from that position, keeping those tight tracks, hitting things more vertical downhill. Uh, not bouncing things, and that was something that all of them had to had to grow in. And he's showed that he is grown in that this this offseason. Adam, if, uh, if somebody says uh, you're going to have a running back cut by committee this season, do you take that as a, a knock on any of your guys, or is that just sort of a reality of where college football is right now? Yeah, I think it's a reality of where we're at in college football. You even see it in the National Football League. You know, it, the days of guys getting 35, 40 carries in a game and, you know, those war daddies, those, those days are a little bit gone. You know, we would like to have guys that are running back by committee, to be honest with you, because what that shows is that shows that we are recruiting the right guys to come in and contribute right away. That shows that the development in the room is where it needs to be, and that breeds competition. So that means we're going to always get fresh bodies and the best guy that has performed the best all week. So the expectation is, is that you know all those guys are ready to play and, and the cream rises to the top so we're always going to play the best players you you do hope that you know when you put one a one b uh the two or the three in the game you, you hope that the drop off is not that not that great you know what i mean and and that means that we got to continue to bring quality people in the building great where, where is the growth of what do you want the growth of the run game to be? Kind of big picture view. What's the next step in the run game in this offense? Yeah, the first thing I wanted to do is to deal with the toughness in the room. You know, I want guys to understand how t it takes uh, an entire room to win football games. So I want guys to understand how to finish games. You know, last year we had some situations where a guy like a Jabari or, you know, some other guys we had, they may have not finished the game. Understand, when we go in that game and strap it up, you're going you're gonna to finish the game. And also, too, from the run game perspective, you know, we need to continue to create explosive plays. You know, this offense is built around making sure guys create explosive plays, understanding exactly where runs are supposed to hit, exactly where free hitters are, so they can understand how to make guys miss. You know, I refer back to that game against Kentucky last year. Jabari had a really great run where he crossed the safety's face in one-on-one -on -one traffic and ended up scoring a touchdown. Just more of that, more of that understanding exactly, you know, how to make guys miss in space and get downhill. And also, too, the last thing I would say is understanding the physicality that we need more in our run game. We need to be able to finish what we call pad plus two. We need to be able to, on contact, fall forward, get third and one, third and two, end up getting those yards. Uh, on the first try, you know, not get it to fourth down. Make sure Coach uh, Goldish and Coach Heupel, they make sure, hey, we can call this play one time and it's going to get the first down. So that physicality in our room needs to continue to grow. Anything else for Coach? Ryan? Drew, Drew because of the, what you were talking about with the depth, you know, how important is it for 
Dylan Sampson to come in ready to go? And, and what, what do you see in his game? Extremely important. I mean, we're expecting Dylan, like all those guys, to come in and have a role exactly at this time. You know, what that role looks like, don't know. But I definitely can see a guy with his speed and his ability. I've uh, been talking to him a lot. He's actually put on a little weight. So exactly, you know, a guy that's what we call a ball in hand guy, a guy that can catch the ball in space, make people miss. You know, he's a 10-4 by Trey, 100-meter dash guy. So he should be able to outrun some people in this league, you know, every now and then. Uh, but we're excited about him coming in the door. We need for that guy to come in and have a role uh, early, very early. Wes? Jerry, how tough is it to get your average kind of freshman ready to do the things you need them to do in your season? I mean, I know maybe they can't know 100% of everything, right, because you're always learning, but how much does a freshman need to know to play, and, and how tough is that to get out of some kids? Yeah, I think, you know, we try to fa figure out exactly what they do best. You know, for example, we were just talking about Dylan Sampson. If Dylan Sampson is a guy that can come in and he can catch bubble screens or he can catch perimeter screens and, you know, he can only run inside zone as a true freshman. He's the best on the roster doing that. Then it's our job to make sure we put him in those positions to do that. I think it really all depends on exactly where their skill set and where they grow that. Uh, you know, a lot of those freshmen who come in from a protection standpoint, they struggle in protections. So sometimes that won't be always the best situation to put them in those third down situations. Some of them are really better at running the football. So like we can put them in those situations. So it really all depends on where they fit and where we feel like they're at from a standpoint of their growth and development. Is it hard? Yes, it's hard. But a lot of it is based off, you know, what their, their, their mental capacity and how hard they're willing to work. You know, what they put into it is what they're going to get out of it. picture with him this offseason, what are some of the things that, that you and him looked at from last season and said these are the things that you can improve and what are some areas you're really pushing him to, to kind of make, maybe take his game to the next level? Man, I think first thing is just his body more than anything. You know, he ended the season last year. He was probably about 199, I think, in that last game against Purdue. By the time we hit, uh, we kind of started middle of the spring this year, I mean, he had been high as 213. So like the body weight and the mass and the armor that he has put on his body is just tremendous. He's made a commitment to eating the right things. He's made a commitment to putting more time in the weight room. You're going to see a different, I think you're going to see a different body type than you saw last year on the field. Uh, the thing that I see in the, in the classroom, he has really been engaged. You know, everybody knows he's been beat up and bruised up a little bit this spring. But one thing you can see is like the growth and maturity in the system. He understands what not only he's supposed to do, he has a little bit better understanding what the receivers and what the quarterbacks uh, is looking for, you know, every play. He's done a good job of watching guys in the National Football League and just seeing how they run the ball, the physicality that they run the ball with. And I think that is going to help him going forward. So overall, I think his body more than anything, but I also think his, his knowledge of the game has increased as well. Thank you, Coach. No problem.